and so on looked up and said, we have had a bevy of activity this morning. I don't know what that word means, but I'm going to look it up. So anyway, good to have you here. Take a breath and just relax as we come to worship. Uh, first of all, Sandy Hopper is over here. And brought, you, can you stand up and tell us who's here? It's, it's just kind of really nice. You've got a whole row of people here. Two daughters, okay. Okay. Only grandson. Only grandson. And Russ. And Russ. Okay. It's good to have you here. I'm glad you included Russ. All those people and Russ. <laughs> anyway, good to have you here as we begin worship. Uh, our call to worship this morning again is responsive, so I just invite you to join along as we begin. We are branches rooted in the mind of Christ. We come because we seek to abide in Christ. The branches that remain in the vine bear much root. We come because we long to be spiritually vibrant, alive, and productive. If we abide in Christ, then Christ's words will abide in us. We come because we strive. We gather for worship now, the glory of the one God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. May we grow wildly as God intends us lovingly. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing our gathering song, For the Fruit of All Creation. Contrite hearts with sun rays of mercy. 
mighty and ever living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what lies ahead, we may follow the way of your commandments and receive the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now we have a special music from the choir.
Thank you very much. How many of you would like to hear that again? Okay, the YouTube channel, either later on today or tomorrow, in fact, all week long, you can hear that same song again, just go to our YouTube channel, it's on there. So thank you very much. Um, as we prepare for the reading of the lessons, let's sing together on Plan on Good Soil. Jesus. 
front seat of the car. 56 Buick station wagon, as I said before, had the bench seat, right? And four of us kids, maybe one of us was in the front there, but the three of us were in the back row, and you know what that meant? Nothing but trouble. <laughs> cut it out! But mom, I said cut it out, if you don't cut it out, dad's gonna pull his car over right now, you're gonna get in trouble. I can just picture my father driving, looking over the side, going, <laughs> like, like, heck, I'm pulling over. Cut it out! That's what the surgeon wanted to do after I was in the hospital, after I already removed eight inches of my colon, and I was having trouble with my kidneys, he gave me some medicine for it, and after two weeks it all cleared up, he said, oh darn. And the nurse came and says, he's a surgeon, he wants to cut things out. He wanted to take one of your kidneys out. And I said, well, thank God he didn't do that. That's all surgeons do, they just take things out. Something wrong with you? Well, I have to remove something. <laughs> cut it out! That's our message for today, pruning, cutting it out. And usually when we talk about this, we cut out things that are not useful, that might be harmful, or just not very helpful for us. How many of you have a long list of those things? How many for those, it's the things that are in your refrigerator or in your cover? Yeah. Oh, you should need that, cut it out, I can't. But the more I looked at our text for today, this has a really different take. It's interesting when you go back to scripture and you say, wait a minute, slow down. Let's see what is actually happening here. It's a different take than what we usually think of because when we think of pruning, we think, well, I gotta cut something up. Uh, there's more to this text than that. First of all, we need the context of this text. It's the last night that Jesus is with his disciples. That means this is Jesus' bucket list, you might say. This is Jesus' final message. This is his last chance to get some things across to them. And that takes on a whole different flavor because he's just sitting there with the disciples and some other people. The first words, I am. I am. I am. That goes back to the Old Testament. Moses said to God, who am I supposed to say something? I am who I am. This is God's name. So every time we read it, we need to pause right there. I am the good shepherd. I am the door. I am the vine. Stop it. I am and take a breath. I am. And then go on. I am. And in this text, we need to remember the rules of what's going on there. God is the what? The vine grower. Jesus is the what? The vine. We are the branches. That's right. You see, God is the actor. God is the pruner. God removes every branch. And this is important. Why? Hmm. There are a lot of people in this world that think that they're the pruners. Have you ever noticed that? I get to tell you what's wrong with you. I get to tell you what you need to cut out. I know more than you do. It's all flipped. Branches cannot prune other branches. But people think that we can. Bad genes. Bad genes. How many of you have bad genes? <laughs> Actually, I have a couple of pair of bad jeans in my closet. <laughs> and they conspire with each other. They sit there and say, let's continue to shrink as much as possible. <laughs> so when he puts his pants on, we can say, ha ha, fatty, you can't get them on, can we? Now, those are bad jeans. But bad jeans. Do you know that People claim other people had bad genes even back in Jesus' day. Who were the people with the bad genes? Anybody know? Who were the people with the bad genes in Jesus' day that people didn't like and hated? Who was it? The Samaritans. Yeah. Or Let's put another word, 
the Palestinians. The Samaritans, they were said to have bad genes because they intermingled and married each other. And who did they marry? The Canaanites, who were living in the land in the first place. And you might as well say that they were Palestinian because they were. Tomorrow we remember indigenous people. And we have to take just a moment and just say, you know what? Um, we as human beings do not have a good track record with indigenous people, even since Jesus' time. The Canaanites, the original Palestinians, were living in that country, in that area, before even the Israelites were there. But suddenly they have bad genes. There's something wrong with you. I would make the case that no one has bad genes because that means that God messed up somewhere. And God, as I seen on a t-shirt one time, God does not make junk. Doesn't. Now along the way there might be something that happens that we can argue about environment and all that other stuff, but God does not make junk. God does not make bad genes. Other people might want to say that, but doesn't. So let's look at the story between Jesus and how he feels about the Samaritans, right? How does Jesus feel about the Samaritans? The one story that most people know is what? The Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan. Even putting those words together drives people crazy. Because for some people, there is no such thing as good Samaritans. I'm sorry you can't say that. And for some people, there's nothing good about immigrants. There's nothing good about Palestinians. There's nothing good about, and you can go on and on and on. But Jesus, when he can get to it, he says there was this good Samaritan and makes the Samaritan the hero of the story which turns the world upside down. In Jesus' ministry, how does Jesus reflect what he's trying to say here? His branches do not prune branches. God does. Well, in Matthew 7, this is what he says. Jesus says, do not judge. How come you can see the speck in your neighbor's eye when you've got what coming out of yours? Look in the mirror, he basically says. Jesus exaggerates to make the point. You're looking for specks where you don't need to be looking. Branches do not prune branches. John 8. Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw the stone. I think you might know that story, but that's a woman that's caught in adultery. And they were going to stone her. <laughs> And they bring her to Jesus and said, Jesus, what are you going to do? The Pharisees said, now come on, Jesus. Okay, well, if you're without sin, throw the first stone. The whole problem with that story is that, that, that the, the man and the woman should have been in front of people, but it wasn't happening because they thought that they were the branches. And branches do not prune branches. Finally, in John 3.17, verse after the most quoted verse in the Bible, Jesus is very specific and he says, indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world. It's not why Jesus is here, but you would think that that's why Jesus is here because people use Jesus to, again, try to prune other people's branches. In fact, Jesus says, I can't even prune the branches because I'm the what? I'm the vine. Can the vine prune branches? No. Who can prune branches? God. And God alone. We gotta watch out for people that want to prune other people's branches. Because that's not their job. We're branches. And actually it says that we can't even prune ourselves. We'll get into that in a little bit, but there's no self-pruning. Can a branch prune itself? No, not really. But there's some things that we need to learn here for sure. <clears throat> Why does God prune? <clears throat> Why does God prune? What's it say there? 
so that the branches can bear more fruit. It's the only reason why that God says that. And Jesus is something that is so important, but we miss it so much. <clears throat> Jesus said to them, you have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Sometimes we read these things very quickly and we move on. You have already been cleansed by the word that I've spoken to you. <clears throat> In other words, you're okay. Because you've heard the word of God. Think about it. The disciples were not baptized. The disciples never took communion. They were probably sacrificed, but just like Jesus came home. Jesus gives them a new commandment in this very same night, and that is to love. And so they're cleansed by this word that is just that word, love. That is what cleanses them, and that's what makes them go and bear much fruit. It's the love of God. It's not the pruning cheers. No. The love of God helps us to take a look at ourselves and know that we, that we are worthy, that we don't have bad genes. <clears throat> so the question is, is, what is the assignment? Now that we have been cleansed by the word, what is the assignment? One word, abide. Abide. That's what Jesus says. After all of this, the last night that Jesus is with them, what he wants to get across to them is that abide in me as I abide in you. That's the most important thing for Jesus right now at that moment. Nothing else matters. Abide. Stay with me. Set up a tent. Because by abiding in me, Jesus says, you will bear fruit. <clears throat> and we bear fruit by abiding in Jesus. How do we do that? Well, do you know that you proclaim God just by coming to church? You do. I think most of your neighbors, if they paid attention to what you're doing, is they probably know that you go to church on a Sunday morning. They probably look at, oh yeah, they're going to church again. They know that. But can we do more? <laughs> yeah, sure, you betcha. We can. Because abiding in Jesus means that we clear out all the distractions. You could call it pruning, but that's fine. But I would say clearing out all the distractions when we abide in Jesus and Jesus abides in us. You see, when we abide in Jesus, we allow God's love to throw through us. When we abide in God, it's God's love that is there with us. This is what Paul says in Romans. This hope, this love, does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. John chapter 7, verse 38. Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water, and that is God's love. By abiding. Not by pruning, but by abiding in Jesus Christ. Water. Water. That which is essential to growth. So let us clear out, you can use the word prune if you want to there, clear out those things that get in on the way with us abiding with God. And you can have a whole long list there. Let us prune out, let us clear out all those things that dam up the process of the flow of God's living waters going through us to other people so that they see love. Let us condemn anyone that's going to judge someone else. Because their branches do not prune branches. And the reason that God proves is so that more people will know of God's love, grace, peace, and joy. Let us abide in Christ so that Christ abides in us. So that people will see the love of God flowing through us. And say, what is it that you have? I want that. It's at that moment that we can talk about God's love and we can tell them that God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Oh,
Let us now sing together. It's an Easter song, but it fits in our theme of Rooted to Grow, and that is now the Green Blade Rises. Let us now join our voices together um, as we pray, Lord, listen to your children. Yeah. 
challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation again. Compassionate God, embolden the church to seek all who are lost. Clothe those who are naked and mend what is broken. May we be generous bearers of your eternal love. God of grace, hear our prayer. Sustain God as we approach harvest time. We pray for farmers, field workers, and those who process crops. Keep us mindful of environmental threats to the nourishing food that feeds the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Steadfast God, inspire world leaders to share resources and work collectively to end global poverty, starvation, and preventable diseases. Direct us to seek justice and equity that all may live in peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who are afflicted, tormented, grieving, oppressed, and lonely. Deliver the strength of your love and compassion to all who need it today. God of grace, hear our prayer. And generous God, we give thanks for the first nations and tribes who inhabited this land. We lament the harm done by colonization. Call us to deeper appreciation and care for the languages, the rituals, and history of the indigenous people. God of grace, hear our prayer. Ever living God, we rejoice to be heirs of the eternal life made real in Jesus' death and resurrection. We give thanks for saints of all times and places, first and last, who still inspire us to faithful living. God of grace, hear our prayer. And God of grace, we thank you that you do indeed hear our prayers. And we continue to lift up those people that are lost, the lonely, the forgotten, those who have been pushed to the edges of our societies and our world today. We certainly do lift up indigenous people from the East Coast all the way to Hawaii. We pray for these people that were the original people that inhabited the land. Pray that your peace may be continue to be with them. And we pray for the millions upon millions of people right here today now that are migrating from one place to another, trying to seek out security, life, and peace in this world that has become increasingly full of war and violence. Be with those who are just trying to eat out a livelihood. We continue to lift up to those who um, are in the southern part of the United States who are now digging up after the floods and the waters and the floods, and we pray that the water may recede and then um, they'll get, be given much help to rebuild their lives too. Lord God, you are the God of promise. You are the God of life. You are the God of love. Help us to continue to love those people around us in very powerful ways. God of grace. Hear our prayer. And God of grace and hope and healing, we continue to pray for these people. And as his names are mentioned, Lord, just help us to get a glimpse and remember what they look like and help us to get a, just a picture of them as their names are mentioned this morning. So we lift up and pray for Verlet, Frida, Marion, Harriet, Joanna, Carol, Don, Anne, Connie, Grace, Joanne, Barbara, John and Jan, Sharon, Lois, Carol, Sharon, Mike and Pat, Doris, Janet, Danielle, Marty, Barbara, Daryl, Norman, Jared, Dennis, John, Ingrid, Janet, 
and also be mentioned in our hearts at this time. celebration we pray for these who are celebrating their birthdays in this coming week <clears throat> we pray for sandy hopper and emily hill lord god continue to shine the light of your joy upon their pathway god of grace hear our in your hands O god we commend all for whom we pray trusting in the saving grace you freely give both now and forever amen, amen. the peace of the lord be with you always Please take a few moments and stand and greet those around you with peace, Lord, as much as you're comfortable doing.
gifts sent with our lives. Help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Together, let us set the table with the invitation to the table. Grain is gathered from the field, threshed and milled for flour. We are formed the grain of God's harvest. Flour is mixed with water to produce basic dough. Water baptism unites us. Yeast is added to transform the mixture. The vision of God's crown draws us onwards. Oil softens the dough and makes a new texture. The Holy Spirit unites us to the body of Christ. A little salt improves the taste. Jesus calls us to be the salt of the earth. The bread is kneaded and shaped, molded and baked. Grapes are harvested and crushed for juice. You are the vine, we are the branches of Christ. Juice and skins are mixed together with yeast for fermentation. God is raised in heaven, God is here. There is a time of waiting, then a time of pressing. God's new life presses forth through the sediment of our lives. And finally, the feast is here. Let us celebrate the feast of our life. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also for the remembrance of me. And so we remember. Gather here, stewards of this table, we follow your command. We remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. As we celebrate, O oh God, this gift of Christ our Savior, with holy bread and cup, we show forth the sacrifice of Christ's death and proclaim his resurrection until he comes in glory. Gather us by this holy, holy communion that you have blessed these gifts to be the body and blood of Christ. Bless us also to become Christ's body in the world. Knit us together in your love and make us one in your eternal purpose. We offer and present to you, O oh God, ourselves, our souls, our bodies, to become a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Through Christ and in Christ and through Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be given glory, honor, and praise now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now sing together the prayer that Jesus taught us.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of the communion. God of harvest, guard us supreme. You place us at the center, feed us, equip us, and having provided for us, look to a different harvest, a fruitfulness of lives and service to you and others. God of harvest, plant us, feed us, put us. Harvest us, that our lives may bring glory to you. Amen. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace now and forever. Amen. Time for the announcements. I don't have my little thing, but we'll try to survive the time. <laughs> the announcements, first of all, welcome. And especially to all of you who are here today, everyone is a member of God's family. And we hope that you are blessed by the worship this morning. And please join us for a special brunch in the fireside room following worship, hosted by the church council leaders. 
We will hear the stories of our sharing the special gifts and hopes that we were given. This is a grace table where everyone is invited with no need to bring anything except a smile. The book club will meet this Tuesday at 4.30 at Rosemary Peterson's home. Please check the bulletin for all the details. The choir will be rehearsing this Wednesday at 10 a.m. There is always a place for you to join the choir, and they did a good job today. The midweek Bible study is this Wednesday at 11 a.m. We'll be studying the lesson for the rooted to grow theme for next Sunday's worship. The Circle of Grace Women's Group will meet this Thursday in the boardroom at 1.30. All women are invited to this special gathering. And then today, thank you for the altar flowers given by Bob and Joanne Paul in celebration of their 73rd wedding anniversary. with love from our three daughters that are here today in honor of their mother's 86th birthday. <laughs> now please take your bulletins home with you and mark your calendars for the events coming up this month, except Celebration Sunday and Reformation coming soon. Okay, thank you very much. Another <laughs> wonderful job. A couple other addition announcements. Yes, go ahead. Just get more in here. No, oh, that's um, okay. I, I, I used to be disruptive because I have disrupted myself anyway. <laughs> to all of those of you who may be considering working on church council, I know that's just at the top of everybody's desire list. But if there's someone who the Spirit has touched to help us with council, we will be meeting after church next Sunday in the fireside room to discuss what each uh, job that uh, entails, how, what requires as far as time and just giving a little bit more information so we would love to have the entire church be in the back of the fireside room next sunday okay and also the joy the joy the simple joy of serving on church council it is such a joyous occasion yes. and everyone fights to say who makes a motion to end this meeting <laughs> they fight for that you should be there too, fighting for the end of every meeting. So anyway, that's it. Okay, all right, let's go. Um, oh, the habitat, uh, the, the dueling campus has been moved and changed, and so there's still, still an opportunity to join us. And there's only 20 seats left, so if you're thinking about it, talk to me, and we'll make sure that you get a seat for that. Uh, and then, uh, oh, coming up on Reformation Sunday, uh, of course, we're red. Uh, I found out that our barbecue cannot barbecue without beer. I'm not talking about root beer, I'm talking about real beer. Of course. So I honestly think that if you want to have a good barbecue, you should bring beer just for our barbecue. <laughs> so you're invited to do that if you want to. After that, we've got a wonderful video. Uh, the women of the church saw this and they just thought it was wonderful. Luther and the Reformation that's coming up. I think there is one more slide. Um, yes, this is the week for anniversaries. 73. Um, Jen and I, Saturday, it's 39. Oh. Yes. Yes. What are we going to do for 30, well, 40 years? <laughs> anyway, so happy anniversary. So, okay, all right. Why don't go on from there? All right, I think that's all good. Great. Join us for the brunch. Uh, I will say a prayer. I'm gonna, I'll say the prayer back there right next to Doris before we go out because she'll probably give me an elbow to remind me, but I'll do that. So I'll be there by Doris. We'll have a prayer. And join us for brunch. Uh, everyone is invited, of course. All right. Uh, these words of blessing as we go today. Risen Lord of the harvest, as the wildflower scatters the seed far and wide, so may your people scatter the seed of hope in soils of despair, Bring into growth those good things that are your gift and promise. And may the blessing of God, Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon us and upon our work as worship done in God's name. Amen. Amen. Uh, first of all, thank you to um, our, our pianist, <laughs> okay, this morning who kind of stepped in at the last minute. So, Jimmy, thank you, Jimmy, for that. Okay. Um, and so we got to let us stand. Our closing, our second song this morning is "A Living Bread from Heaven."
God, we thank you for the gift of this time of worship, and we ask that you bless our meal that we're about to receive. We thank you for your blessings from the bounty of the earth. We pray for those who uh, helped put all that food on the table for us. We think of farmers and harvesters and farm workers and all those people. So bless our meal and bless our time together that we can continue to serve you with love, grace, peace, and joy. In your names we pray. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Go in peace. Follow Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.